No strategy will save you if your mindset is broken. Stop looking for the reasons why your idea will not work out. There's a million reasons why your idea will not work out and instead, focus on the one or two or three ways that you can win. You need to take consistent action every single day. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan level talent at something and I want you to find it, embrace it and use it to make a difference. So to help you on your journey today, we're going to look at the seven ways to start a successful business from nothing. Enjoy. So this is a question I get asked a lot. Evan, I don't have a lot of money. Evan, I don't have a lot of resources. Evan, I didn't go to the right school. I have no connections. My parents aren't super successful. How do I start a business from absolutely nothing and achieve success? This is what this video is all about. So let's kick it off with way number one, shift your mindset. For everybody asking this question, you are starting off in a loss. You are starting off in a deficit because you're coming from a place of scarcity. If the thing that attracted you to this video is the starting from nothing, you're in a mindset of having nothing. You've lost before you even started. If you think that you have nothing, you have lost. Understand that you are amazing, that you have Michael Jordan level talent at things, that you have all the resources that you need around you. The people who win are rarely, very rarely, the sons and daughters of people who have won. Look at who your heroes are. Look at the people that you look up to who've done the big thing that you want to do. Chances are they started off with less than what you already have right now. You have more than what they had and you're sitting here thinking that you have nothing because you're focusing on the wrong things. Resourcefulness is the ultimate resource. One of my favorite quotes is from Steve Wozniak who said, stop thinking about the things that you don't have and rather think about what you can do with what you do have. So change your mindset. Stop telling yourself you have nothing. Stop looking for the reasons why your idea will not work out. There's a million reasons why your idea will not work out and instead, focus on the one or two or three ways that you can win. Focus on the people who are supporting you. Focus on the friends that can lift you up. Focus on the creativity that you have to get to the path. Eliminate the mindset that you have nothing because the rest of the tips will not help you. No strategy will save you if your mindset is broken. Way number two is start with the service. I love starting a business based off a of service because you don't know what you're doing at the beginning of a business. And what so many people do is they spend a lot of money or whatever money they have, they drain their bank account, they take out a loan to launch a t-shirt business. They pick the wrong design, they buy 5,000 t-shirts because that's how you get the price breaks at higher quantities. And you end up with all these t-shirts sitting in your mom's garage or basement. You don't know what you're doing. You're gonna make tons of mistakes. And that's okay, expect it. The best way to start a business is around the service. Don't spend money until you have money. So try to figure out, even if you long-term wanna build product, think about how you can translate that into a service. So if your long-term goals, you wanna sell you know, gluten-free cupcakes and donuts and bagels and butter tarts. Oh my God, gluten-free butter tarts. Any butter tarts really just amazing. I love butter tarts. Oh. My mouth is drooling from butter tarts. Anyway, that's where you want to go. Don't start off selling these things at a big sale. Start off looking at who has a need for this kind of service. Who can you create custom products for? Who can you bake this stuff for? They have a need. They want to be healthy. They're on a gluten-free diet. You can come in and provide that service as a chef, as a baker for them. And then you can expand into product when you know exactly what works. Start with the service. Way number three is look for your first client. Whatever it is that you end up wanting to do, whatever entry service you have coming out into the market, start looking around your friends, your family, your colleagues, your connections, the people at your work, people who you went to school with. Look for anybody who might have a use for your service. When you start connecting with people and say, hey, how are you doing? What are you up to? You're telling them your plan. You're looking for your first client. You're not gonna make a lot of money, if any money, off your first client, because you need to get track record. You need to know what you're doing. You need to show that you can bring value. But your immediate priority is, how can I find some clients for me to be able to build my business and learn from? When Lily first started her coaching practice with me, she did 100 free coaching sessions a hundred free coaching sessions just to get the skills, just to put it in reps, just to figure out what she was doing. Now, your skills might be higher than what Lily's were when she first got started. That's okay, maybe you don't have to do a hundred. 
But starting off looking for a client, finding somebody who has a problem and you coming in and solving it for them, even if that's not your long-term ambition, but just to build up a reputation, just to learn how the, your industry works, just to start providing value is momentum for your company. So start immediately looking for who your first client could be from your network, from the people around you, from the people that you know, so you can get that client in the door. Way number four is get close to your clients. So if you get your first client, your second client, you get a handful of clients, get as close to them as possible. Spend as much time with them as possible. Provide them with way more value, way more time than they are paying you for, even if it's free. What you wanna do is get as close to them as possible to understand what their problems are, to understand how you can truly, truly, truly actually help them. And the more you get close to them, the more you spend time with them, the more they'll realize that they have problems that they didn't even think of that they have frustrations that you can go in and solve and they didn't even think about you as a solution. The more time you spend with somebody, the more you're gonna recognize how many problems they have and that creates a business opportunity for you, both from the service side immediately. Like, let me help you with that problem. I can solve it for you and for product down the line. That if you have 10 clients who all have the same problem, you know, let me make a product around that same problem everybody has. Where most people start product, they miss the mark on who's gonna use it and what they're gonna use it for and then you have to spend a lot of money without getting any results. So start with a service, get as close to the client as possible, understand what their problems are, and solve as many of them as you can physically possibly solve for them. Way number five is take consistent action. This is across anything. You wanna have success in any field, you need to take consistent action. I think this is one of the things that entrepreneurs end up sucking at, especially in the early days, because you're not getting results, because you're not getting enough momentum, because you're not seeing the money coming in, so many people quit. Or you'll start and you'll stop, and you'll start and you'll stop, and you'll start and you'll stop. You need to take consistent action every single day to get better, to improve, to build momentum, to make calls. Whatever the thing is that you need to do, you need to make sure that you do it on a daily basis. There should not be a day that goes by in your calendar where you have not taken action to grow your business. You know, maybe take your birthday off, put a little heart over your birthday. Your birthday can take off. Every other day, you are off, spending at least half an hour Work it on your business. Don't do the start and stop and start and stop because you don't allow for momentum to grow. Every single day, consistent action, growing your company. Way number six is improve your skills. You wanna get so good at the thing that you're doing that people can't help but wanna have you come back. That people can't help but say, this person is amazing. That people can't help but tell their friends about you. Just doing the job is not good enough, especially as a startup entrepreneur. Just doing the job solves the problem, but it doesn't make other people wanna talk about you. When you can improve your skills to the point that somebody looks at you and they look at the work that you're doing and the job that you've done and say, wow, that's amazing. That's when your business really starts to take off. And listen, you might be that from the get. You might be so amazing at what you've done because you put in 20 years of work getting really good at it and now it's your time to launch and be an entrepreneur. Or you might just be at the start. You might just be figuring things out. Wherever you are along the scale, you want to get a wow reaction from your clients. If you are not getting a wow reaction, then you don't have a good enough skill set. And that's okay. You can train skills, you can work harder, you can put in the practice. So you need to make sure that every day, that consistent action that you're doing is not just providing value for the clients, but it's also for you to get better at the thing that you're doing. Your goal is to every day when you're interacting with clients that they say, wow. And way number seven is model success. I'm a huge fan of modeling success. Basically find the people who you look up to and learn what worked for them and apply them to your business. There's two kinds of people that I would try to learn from. First is somebody in your industry. You know, if you're trying to sell gluten-free cupcakes or butter tarts, mm. There may not be some super successful butter tart salesperson who's done gluten-free that you can model. There's people who've had success in baking, in food. Learn their stories, research them, understand how they got started. Again, zero to one, not how they make an extra million dollars now that this giant corporation. Zero to one, how did they get started? It's what I did for my first business. It was a software company. I looked at Bill Gates who started Microsoft. How did he go from zero to one? How did that happen? And I applied those strategies to my business and I took off. In a really short amount of time, after I had struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled, modeling success for the people in your industry is a win. The second part of it is 
aspirational mentors who are not in your industry. If you love Steve Jobs and you're selling cupcakes and butter tarts, you can learn from him. If you love them, success leaves clues and you're much more likely to follow the example because you love Steve Jobs or you love Kanye or you love Oprah or whoever the person is. And so I look to model success from the people who've made it inside your industry as well as just anybody who you love and look up to. Because the more you can apply those strategies, the more you can taste success, the more you can be around success, the more you're gonna apply it into your business and the more you will achieve success. So those are my seven ways on how to build a successful company from nothing. I would love to know what do you guys think? What rule was the most important to you? You're going to apply immediately to your situation. Did I miss an eight, nine, 10 that you want to add to the list? Put it down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is much love. See you soon. If you tell yourself a story long enough, you start to believe it. Once you believe it, you act like it. I have yeah. tussled with a whale out of handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. Now you know I'm bad. Only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine sick. <laughs> the fundamental key to success is it can take between 18 and 254 days of taking action for a new habit to stick. I've created a new course called 254 Confidence where every single day for 254 days I will be sending you a video between 30 seconds and 5 minutes long that you start your morning with around making you feel confident. It's absolutely free. Check out the link in the description below to get access.